even if you have the best auto mechanic in the world. Our next guest says there are some basic questions everyone should be able to answer about their car. Knowing the correct information could keep your car running smoothly and perhaps save you money on unnecessary repairs. Now as I ask these questions, follow along, test your own car knowledge. Here with the answers is John O'Connor, owner of Shady Tree Garage. Welcome, John. Hello, Meredith. Thank you for having me. Oh, sure. Well, I'm, I'm interested to get some answers to these questions. So we're going to be talking about what every woman should know about her car. So I have several questions they've prepared me with. Let's see how much I know. How often should we be adding and changing our oil? We should be changing our oil every 3,000 miles with a conventional oil and every 7,500 miles when it's a synthetic oil. And you should check the oil in between your oil changes with some regularity. Um, I recommend most people check it about halfway through, say 1,500 to 2,000 miles through. And that's to check and see if the oil's Just gotten low? Just to check it and make sure it's not gotten low. Okay. All right. Good. I knew that answer. So that's, that's good. Um, a little bit about the synthetic oil, though, for those who don't know, because that's kind of new. It's, a, uh, it's not a mineral-based oil anymore, so it will last much, much longer. It is also about twice the price. Ah, so do you recommend it or? Think? If the manufacturer recommends it, then we would go with it. I also recommend it on some turbocharged applications. Okay, but I've heard, yeah, I've heard you can stretch a little bit. I mean, 7,500 miles with the synthetic oil, but yeah, it's more costly. You're gonna pay a little more for the product, but if you're not gonna get into your mechanic every 3,000 miles, it's probably a better way to go. Then it might work. All right, so next question. What are some other fluids that we should check on a regular basis? Well, we should be checking st stuff like the windshield washer solvent. You should be checking the coolant in the radiator, your transmission fluids. Um, a lot of cars nowadays monitor these systems, and your technician should always be checking it every time the oil is changed. And is that enough? Let them uh, check it every time the oil is changed, or would you check it more often? Or? I would uh, only check it if there's a symptom. Okay. okay. Or if you see any spotting in the driveway or anything like that that might lead me to suspect there's a potential leak. Uh, which means the fluids would be getting low be getting and so lower. on and so forth. Yeah, I can't say that I check my windshield wiper fluid very often, though. It's usually when it runs out, I go, That's ah, right. need more windshield wiper fluid. <laughs> All right, so um, there are many different types of car washes. Now, this is important upkeep, turns out, for your car. Different types of car washes. Is one more beneficial than another, or are they all just simply about keeping the car clean? The... Um no, it's more than just keeping the car clean because keeping it washed protects the finish. Um, I recommend people wash their car monthly. And the reason is the brakes are actually ventilating through the wheels. But, John, it rains at least once a month. Isn't that enough? It hasn't enough? rained at all. <laughs> uh, the brake dust that gets on the wheels is actually corrosive to some of the alloy wheels. Oh, so really? So you'll see them badly discolored. So that's one of the reasons why I like to see you wash your car regularly. Um, and you should wax it at least twice a year in the spring because we feel better because it looks nice but more importantly in the winter to protect the paint and the finish from the uh, harsh winter elements really oh yeah. that's a good tip all right next question talk to me about gas now i've heard that you should stick to the same brand of gas is that true that's not necessarily true all the majors um, are pretty much buying the same base stock in the port and then they're putting additives in of their own which makes them a little bit unique but the base stock is all pretty much the same, so I wouldn't worry about brand per se. Okay. How about when we're looking at premium versus super versus whatever the, the name is? This is a loaded question. Oh. The car manufacturers will recommend either super or regular for your car, but the reality is the cars will adapt. The cars will adjust. If there are strategies built into the computers, so if you use an inexpensive fuel, you will not see any difference in performance but you may see a difference in your fuel mileage. Really? So, yes. So getting less fuel mileage Correct. for every gallon? So what I recommend most people do is run about four tanks of gas, mm -hmm. track their fuel mileage using super. Okay. And then go to four tanks, track your fuel mileage with regular. If you really? get 10% better fuel mileage with the super, the car needs super. Really? So it's not even about looking at the money that you're saving. If it gets that much better mileage, it needs it. Then the car needs it. And That's you can rerun the test to see if a mid-grade will work for you as well. Okay. That's very interesting. So. Didn't know that one. I bet you didn't know that one either. All right. Are there other things that I should be doing on a regular basis for my car? 
You should absolutely be checking the air uh, tire pressure uh, monthly or before you do any traveling. Um, and having a tire pressure gauge is actually important, even on the cars with a tire pressure monitoring system. Really? This Why? is where the car will tell you, oh, you have a flat tire. <laughs> but most of them are pretty dumb systems. They don't tell you which one. Oh, really? And so you can get out, and, then, and a four-pound difference in tire pressure, you cannot see with your eyes looking at the tire. And nowadays, with the price in gas, I, I've heard that you get better gas mileage with a properly inflated Absolutely. tire. Absolutely. So that's two Less big rolling reasons. resistance. All right. Excellent. Now, how about tire rotation? Should be done every 7,500 miles. And the idea behind this is what? We can control the wear on the tires, mm -hmm. um, and they will last longer. Okay. Is literally what it comes down to. And that's for two reasons. Money is the first one that comes to my mind. Correct. But there's also a safety element? There's a safety element because if the tires develop a wear pattern, okay, they will get noisy and they may actually skid on wet pavement. Okay. So make sure we've got the tire rotation every 7,500 miles. Correct. When you change your synthetic oil. Ah, all right. And that's good to kind of track things that right. way and keep a little kind of notebook or something like that in the car so that that's you correct. know what you're doing. All right, how about those warning lights that go on on your dashboard, whether it's check engine or all those little things? Is that so, is there, should my blood pressure be skyrocketing through the roof when they come on and I'm panicked and I pull well, over you, to the you, side of the road? My favorite subject. <laughs> oh, yeah? Right? Okay, two things you must know, okay. One is, um, if the light is yellow, it's advisory. Okay. Okay, if it's red, you clearly have a problem, and you should stop or shut the car down. Really? So, yes, if it's an oil pressure light that comes on, you should be shutting the car down, getting out your cell phone, and calling for a tow truck. Really? If it's a yellow light, it's advisory. Keep going, you can deal with it at your next service opportunity. All right, so similar to our traffic lights. Yellow, proceed with caution. Red, stop. Stop. That red brake light comes on, stop. Huh. That, that really is interesting. That, um, and how about, I know there's, there's lights sometimes on your dashboard that have to do with um, emissions. Check or, engine or, light. Yes, thank you. Check engine light. That's what yes. Um, our industry has done quite a disservice to the public with that check engine light. We've kind of minimized its importance, but it really is a very important item. It is telling you your car is polluting. Now, sometimes it's only polluting because the gas cap was left off or left loose. Mm -hmm. Other times it may be developing a running problem, which down the road could cost you a lot of money. Sure, especially the next time you get your car inspected or you're going to have to fix well, it anyway. Well, you will fail inspection if that light is on. And it's causing you a big problem if you're ruining the environment, too. That's you don't want to be doing that. All right. So if I've got trouble with my car and I'm going to see a mechanic, how can I best prepare for that trip? Well, you can be the best tool I have in my toolbox because the information you bring me when you bring your car in will help me solve that problem probably quicker than any of the tools I have. Your description of when the symptom occurs, okay, even making small sounds or, or reflecting on yeah, what the you, weather was. You've got a funny comparison when you talk about women versus men bringing their cars into your shop. Talk to me about that. Well, the men tend to think they know what's going on, so they tell us what's wrong. Invariably, they say, oh, it needs a fuel filter. They really don't know any more than I would know without my tools. <laughs> so what we really need is a good description of the symptom, mm -hmm. because when it occurs and how it's occurring will lead us to a solution much quicker, and that'll save the consumer money. So it's a good thing when I come in and I say, I hear this, Absolutely. kind of sound. Those types of things are good things because they help you out. They help us solve the problem. They ha. really do. And everybody made fun of me for making all my sounds, but that really helps. All right, good. So any um, tips on finding a great mechanic when you're looking for one, especially well, like, if you've moved or something? Right. Like anything else, uh, if somebody has a relationship with a good technician, okay, a good referral is worth its weight in gold. AAA also has a uh, approved auto repair program mm -hmm. where they qualify the uh, shop as far as their training, their tool crib, uh, and their certifications. There's also a, uh, a certification organization which has a symbol which is just a blue gear and it has letters ASE in the middle of it. Okay, I've seen that before. Yep. Okay. And that's a battery of tests. It's a voluntary program, but just like a CPA or a lawyer that's taken a bar exam, when you see that blue gear, the technicians have passed that exam. Excellent. So referrals, AAA, 
ESA. Fabulous. A -S -A -S -E. All right. ASE. ASE. Automotive Service Excellence.